Welcome back to another episode of The Least Favorite. I'm your girl, Natalie, and if you're watching on YouTube, I promise the rest of the episode does not look like this. I'm actually joined in today's episode by three other people. Um, I'll just give their introductions right now. Uh, I have friend Jazz and Shampoo from the Short End of the Stick podcast. They're both Dominican. And then I have Melissa, who is someone that I know from elementary school. Um, she is a dancer. She is a mother. She was born and raised in the Bronx, and she is Puerto Rican. And I, Natalie, am Dominican and Puerto Rican. Now, you may be wondering why I'm even giving a whole, like, ethnicity breakdown, but it has everything to do with what we spoke about on this episode. So in this episode, we tackle topics like colorism in the Latino community. We talk about being Afro-Latino. We talk about whether, we talk about even the different types of ways to identify as a Latino. And we talk about whether or not we agree or use or what we think about Latinos using the N-word. Um, and I feel like this conversation as a whole is just very long overdue. In 2020, when I wanted to have this conversation, when I first started the podcast, I didn't, I wasn't knowledgeable enough and I didn't feel comfortable. It's a very sensitive subject and there's a lot of different opinions and there's a lot of ignorance and there's a lot of resentment and self-hatred and confusion and entitlement that comes with it. So as you can see, it's like a range of emotions that come with this type of conversation. And I think now I'm just at a place where it's like, fuck it, let's just address the elephant in the room and let's do what we have to do for the culture. Um, so, you know, I really implore you guys to really like tap in Think about your experiences. Think about what you agree with, what you don't agree with, and share how you feel. Um, again, this is regardless of how you feel. To me, this is a very important conversation to have. So, I hope you enjoy it, and yeah, keep on watching. That's All right. Your, before we get into the episode, we always do a topic from the bowl. Um, you said you were gonna pull it, right? Let's do it. It'd be random. All right. Well, so let's well. see. Who reads it? You do. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> I thought I just yeah. pulled it. No. <laughs> All right. You do both. That's my camera, right? Yeah. What is a book that has truly... <laughs> <laughs> what? Please read it for me. Let me see. That has truly... <laughs> I don't... Oh, influenced you. Oh. There we go. Sorry, my friend wrote these. Her no script problem. is a little weird. So what book, what is a book that has truly influenced you? First of all, are y'all readers? Because some people don't I like got, to read. I, I got a, I got okay. a heavy. I, could, I have a few books. Okay. I got a heavy top 10. Okay. And I have them in a nice order. Okay. And I tell people, these books help me. And I think this order is a good way to go at them if you feel like changing your mindset. The number one book on that list is The Four Agreements. Oh, okay. Yes. That's a popular one. Yeah, I never read it, it, though. Oh. I haven't read it. No. Mm -mm. I thought you guys were relating. I have, the, no. I have the 50 Cent one the, that he did with the author of... Yeah, I read that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they have a book together? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I don't even know he had a fucking book. Um... And then I think you're gonna give us the whole list. No, no, the question was that one was book. it. <laughs> I know, but I wanted to know now. When you're like, uh, don't shut me up. All right, fine. Um, my favorite, uh, the one has influenced me. Oh my god, I always mention this book. <clears throat> DJ Khaled wrote a book, The Keys. <laughs> Did you guys know that? No. <laughs> Major Keys. <laughs> I love that book. Yeah, all right, it's DJ Khaled. I know, but honestly, the things that he was saying in that book, it was super relatable. It was just like, yo, just work hard, stay consistent. Like, all those things that, like, I kind of didn't really know. Right. Um, I read it when I, it was like 2016 when I picked it up. And it told me a lot. Like, it got me into that personal development journey. I wanted to read more books similar to that. And just like, I know a lot of people make fun of him because he's kind of corny. But everything that he's done and how hard he's worked to get to where he's at, like, that shit was fire to read it's about very it. Inspirational. Yeah, so I liked it. How about okay, you guys? Uh, I think mine has always been Flowers for Algernon. Oh, okay. I Do remember that book, yeah. yeah. We read it in school? I did we? I feel like we did, did, yeah. I feel like I read it, like, three times. And I even made my mom read it. <laughs> <laughs> so you liked it? What is it that book about, book? though? So basically, it was about this young man who had a very low IQ. And they were okay. doing 
like experiments on a mouse to raise his IQ. Oh, I remember yeah. that. Yes, yeah. and then he got really smart. smart, and then he dumped down again, and he, he ended, ended up progressing and yeah. dying. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just really teaching you to be in the moment as much as you can, because mm -hmm. he really got extremely smart and he was intelligent and he understood emotions now and how to move through the world. So it's just like, you know, just take your time, live in the moment, be patient because you really never know when it's done. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. How, how about, about you? you man? <laughs> uh, my favorite book of all times is The Grinch That Stole Christmas. My man. Really? <laughs> I think he's joking, but if you're serious, what did you learn from I'm it? Right, because now I don't know if you're joking or you're serious. No, I'm not joking. I'm serious. Okay. I mean, I love The Grinch. I love so. the movie. What like do you movie. take from it that, that it makes <laughs> right. you your favorite? People always misconstrue that he hated Christmas. He hated people. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, if you really think about it, it wasn't, it wasn't so much about Christmas. It was about people. People, you know, people suck sometimes, so kind of understand it. And that was everybody's favorite holiday in that town. That's so what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I yeah, hate yeah, Christmas. Yeah. I hate people. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. So Christmas is everybody loves Not Christmas. you making the Grinch deep. <laughs> that was bad I deep. Mean, the, the no, it is though. It. I mean, as he was adult, old, yeah. That's your favorite. That's crazy, but. That's one of my favorite I mean, um, Christmas movies. It really yeah. is though. I love that movie. I can it's watch cute. it all the time. It is a good one. <sighs> all right. Are we ready to get into the episode? I'm ready. Okay. So I wanted to talk about well, I really wanted to talk about what I posted yesterday, but we'll get to that. Right. But I wanted to talk about our experience being, how have you done if I Hispanic, Latino, Spanish um, in America, right? And what that experience has been like for us. And so I wanted to start first by asking you how you identify. So if someone was to ask you, what's your cultural identity? What would you say? Would you say you're Spanish, Hispanic, Latino, um, Afro-Latino? I say Hispanic. Hispanic, okay. Like I'm saying I'm Spanish, even Spanish. though that's probably not the proper term. <laughs> like, yeah. like, for example, like if I'm writing it like on a piece of paper that, oh, what are you? Yeah, I'll put, um, you know. Because they put Hispanic, Latino on those like applications and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'll put you kind of have to assimilate though when yeah. it comes to those things because they put you in a box and then you're forced to figure out, okay, where do I really belong? Especially because as Latinos or Hispanics, we're biracial. So not many of us can walk both or some of us can walk one or the other. So it kind of is like, which mm -hmm. am I? Who am I? Mm -hmm. Especially to be accepted. Mm -hmm. How do you identify? So I always say I'm Latino or Afro Latino or okay. Latina. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Do we know the differences? Because honestly, <laughs> I mean, I know them. I have them written down. But before, I want to say like before 2020, you know, in 2020, how we had the BLM movement. Yes. And now yeah. everybody, I feel like at that point, they were really tapping into their history. Yes. And that's when I started learning more. Like my sister started doing, I guess she had a lot of time on her hands, but she did the Ancestry.com. So you could see like what was in your blood, your bloodline. Um. And so I found out that we were like 31% Spaniard, 18% Portuguese, but then everything else was like Western and Eastern African. Okay. And obviously that's from my mom's side, who's Dominican. Um, but I just feel like I always identified as Spanish because I feel like when you're born and raised in the Bronx, people just call you Spanish. Spanish. You say yeah. Spanish, you Spanish. Like, that's yeah. it. You nobody's it, you're Spanish. Nobody's yeah. really trying to say, no, you have to say Hispanic or you have to say Latino. So I wanted to go over really quickly, like, all the differences and what they actually mean. Like the political correct terms. Right. And why we have so many different terms. Right. So if you say you're Hispanic, that's to describe people with Spanish-speaking heritage. Okay. So those from Latin American countries, obviously, they were colonized by Spain. Um, and they they also say like it kind of came from like Hispaniola um, that has Dominicans and yep. the Haitians together. Um, so then if you say you're Latino or Latina, that means that you are a little it's more inclusive than Hispanic. It encompasses all people from Latin America and um, those colonized by Spain and Portugal. So not just Spain. Right. Latinx is just for them to include people who identify as like non-binary or transgender. Mm. That's the only reason why they put that. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I yeah, never understood yeah. the, the X part. I think like, it's because if you're saying Latino, or Latina, I'm a guy, or right. Latina, I'm a female. So it's like, if I put that X in, it's all uh, inclusive. It's all, that's, that's literally all it is, but it's that's the same as Latino, is. Latina. It's just in, all See, inclusive. Bosses, how do you feel about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, that's a whole different, like, that's so <laughs> new. Like, as millennials, it was just, like, one or the other. Right. But then... As That's a very Gen Z, like, way... Oh, man. Very much. So, um, I, I would just... Big time. I would just call, call myself, 
call myself Hispanic. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I just feel like, um, yeah, Latin, I don't know, Latin, uh, they're doing to too much with that something one. something out of nothing, I just say Hispanic. Yeah, and, yeah. and then the Spanish is not Spain, commonly right? used to describe um, people of Latin American descent. It can refer to individuals from Spain. Spain, yes. Yeah. It highlights European roots of some Hispanic and Latino individuals. Yes. But I, a lot of people say, if you're not from Spain, then technically you're not Spanish. But so that's you shouldn't why say that. I feel like it's weird when people say I'm Spanish because it's, it's either you're from Spain or that's the language you speak. Right. That's not really where you're from, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, I feel like it's either you're Latino. If you're from the Latin Americas, mm -hmm. from perspective wise of like, you know, where you was raised, the span, the type of Spanish that you speak, because it's definitely different in each like country. Yeah, it is. So, yeah. So it's either Latino, Latino or Latinx, mm -hmm. right? Be inclusive. Yeah. What about, <laughs> Be inclusive. What about yeah, Chicano? Yeah, 2023. Okay, so I don't know, because that's Mexican. <laughs> that Mexican. Yeah, but American? isn't that just like Mexican or Mexican-American? Right. Mexican right. American. Yeah. And so with that, I don't it even is, know. Yeah, yeah, I believe it is. Yeah. More of a West Coast thing, I, I feel, think. But you know what I've noticed? I feel, yeah. I feel like in New York, yeah, when you're that. Mexican, too, it's like you're Mexican. Yeah, there's no... There's no... We don't... We just, like, make such a distinction between yeah. us and, like, Mexicans. But I believe, like, Chicano culture is, like, California or West. Oh, that could be that. Yeah. I really don't know. I would have to yeah. get a Mexican person to yeah. talk about it because I have Not no idea. True. Yeah. Okay, so now when it comes to um <clears throat> being Afro-Latino... Did you guys always know this was a thing? Like, let's discuss the Afro-Latino, oh. all right? And let's just talk about first the definition. So it talks about people with African descent, with Latin American or Hispanic heritage. These are people who have both African and Latin American or Hispanic roots, highlighting the, you know, the diversity that we have. Um, they can identify with their African heritage and their Latin American or Hispanic identity. So... What do we think of this term? Because, again, that's another new term that I heard in 2020. And I also want to say that I feel like in school, we're not really taught our history. We're taught American history. Yeah, it's definitely or, And then it's like, yeah, like all I knew about Christopher Columbus was that he discovered America. That's it. I Meanwhile, didn't know shit about him <laughs> raping people, colonizing. I didn't know shit about that. They don't teach you that Meanwhile, shit. Meanwhile, but yeah. that's even a lie, too, because even to make it to the Americas, he landed in, in like where DR Haiti is, right? Hispaniola, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he didn't even get there. So that's even a lie that they're telling us. It's just, it's just like, unless you had your family actually teaching you, like sitting you down, talking to you about mm. the history, like, you know, I'm Dominican. My mother never sat me down to talk about like Trujillo and like everything he did or even like how, where right. we really come from. She didn't even know this term Afro-Latino. And even her, me and my sister had to, had to have a conversation with her about, you know, you're black. Right. And she was like, what? Like, I'm, what? You're not so black. <laughs> yeah. You're not so black. She was like, what do you mean? And then we had to really break it down. And, you know, it was like a shock to her. But it's like, you know how, like, so many people are living this way without knowing. And that's why you have so much resistance. Right. It's because colorism is so rooted in our culture. Mm -hmm. And the denial of it and is so deep because the moment you accept it, you have to bear that weight of how America looks at black people, mm -hmm. right? And all the the, sh the troubles and everything that they've been through. And then you like assimilate into it if I say that I'm black. Mm -hmm. And then it's just, I feel like a lot of Latinos want to work or live in privilege in a sense because that was the way to survive. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so it's it's definitely hard to talk to our elders about it mm -hmm. because they just lived in this world. And now that there's so much information on, there's so much at the tip of our fingers, we're searching who we are and having stories mm -hmm. and telling each other our experiences of how we walk. Mm -hmm. through, you know, mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. like it's definitely mm -hmm. hard to break the barrier with our elders about it. Yeah. But you got to just keep talking about it. <laughs> How about your parents? Yo, like, my father didn't even know slavery existed. No what? way. My father didn't really go to school like that. Okay. And, okay. and in DR, I don't no, even know if okay. they teach that in school. But uh, probably probably not. He really didn't go to school. I think it's so more like an American thing. he learned in like very old age that, yeah. <laughs> that yeah, slavery yeah, yeah. was actually a thing. Wow. You know how crazy that's, that is? But I think did you have that conversation with him though? No, my brother did. Okay. Oh. Yeah. And oh, what was his reaction? Like, I'm curious. What made your brother wanted to, to like talk to him about it? 
I don't know. They, they're probably talking about, you know, how conversations just pop up. Right, they're probably right, talking right. about inequality. Right, or right, who knows right. What and it your was. father's probably like, what are you talking about? My, my father <laughs> only knows the Dominican, oh, that you're, you're dark, I'm light. Mm-hmm. The light, so light people are usually more privileged or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Dominicans know that within Dominicans. And, and in the States, too. Dominicans come here, they know yeah. that's, the, that's the black people, yeah. that's the white people. But do, they, you know, do you believe it's because Americans, like, they really care more about race? Than any other country. I don't know. I think the other they wiped all the history, <laughs> all, all that part. Yeah, I don't hear. True. I don't hear about Dominicans talking about slavery over there ever. Me either. Yeah, in America, yeah. it's constantly taught and talked yeah. about. Yeah, and but it's also mostly spoken about with Black people. Their their history, yeah. their slavery, yeah. and so I think that's where the divide comes because you said something about like we have to kind of adapt or assimilate to that experience yes. right but if you feel like your family never went through that experience because you were never taught knowing that they had that experience too then for me i feel like even with me being light skin right it's like yeah i'm afro latina but i still haven't had the experience of right. colorism like being used against me right it's always been in my favor and so there's privilege there yeah. so i feel like sometimes even uncomfortable having these conversations because i'm like can i really relate to someone darker than me whether they're black or they're afro latino because their experience i know is definitely different than my experience never to that extent <coughs> mm-hmm. never to that extent but i would say that we do experience segregation in a sense of mm-hmm. like you look different I don't, mm. And I don't think I really realized that until I started working in Scarsdale. Mm. Oh. What was that like? Because oh, yeah. <laughs> I went to school in Hofstra and it was a lot of white girls. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. it's like so you I feel started, the difference. I was working at a boutique. It was called Pookie and Sebastian. And it was very small, very, it was bougie. It was bougie. And I didn't realize that I was different until the type of customer that will come in and then like no I'm okay or they just you kind of just felt like this animosity and I was just like wow like I really am different there is a difference Mm -hmm. you know but there isn't a difference at the same time you know like there shouldn't be a difference right like you just look how you look and you're working yeah, there and then you're right. asking them if they need Obviously, help. Obviously, if I'm here at Pookie and Sebastian, I have the credentials <laughs> right. to right. style you. Right, right, right. You feel me? Mm-hmm. But you rather just roam the store and go to someone else, which is fine. Like, that's your preference. Cool. But yeah. just really acknowledging that and noticing that for mm-hmm. the first time. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, there is there is a sense of like uncomfortability. Yeah. Yeah. Around yeah, yeah, yeah. people who just, you know, identify as white people. Mm-hmm. And your experience, what's that like? What was that like? Did you think about these terms? How does your family view it? Is there colorism in your yeah, family? There's 100% colorism. Mm-hmm. I mean, nah. my, look, at, look at this fucking guy. He's chosen, man. <laughs> Me being a dark person. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not nice. I, I saw it. What are you talking about, bro? I saw it firsthand, you know, even yeah. in DR, because I was born in DR. Mm-hmm. DR. So, like, over, even over there, like, you're, you're more than eight, though, you're like, mm. mm-hmm. you looked at like you're less than them, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, if you're like, like this guy is so Oh, lighter. he would be thriving. Oh, but he, <laughs> he got the blonde now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what uh, I'm I saying? I got bad looks, I think, because the tattoos and the blonde hair. Yeah. Yeah. So, I got bad looks in DR. Yeah, but you know what? Dominican people don't like the tattoos. Oh, the old school ones, yeah, they don't yeah. like that don't shit. Know. Dominicans don't like that. They like, they that, think that you was... probably worship the devil. Yeah, you yeah, like yeah. a fucking delinquente. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and that was actually one of the topics I wanted to bring up for the differences of Puerto Rican and Dominican. Oh, we can talk about it now. All Wait, right. but for, you know what? Are we done with color? No, I want to talk more a little bit about oh, colorism. Let's do it. Or are let's we put done? That one. No, 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 because we couldn't get there. We're going to get there. Yeah, let's put the other one. Okay, 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 okay. So, colorism, I'm done to so colorism, that. yeah. So, uh, oh no, go ahead. All right. So I used to be a correction officer. Mm-hmm. That's when I experienced <laughs> really? uh, blatant racism. Mm. It's it's it was New York State Prison. But like, who against who? Inmates against you? Correctional mm-hmm. officers against inmates? Everybody against everybody? everybody it's like free for all? Oh my god. The the COs, the the lieutenants, mm-hmm. the everybody. Mm-hmm. If you're if they're racist, they're open in jail. Okay. No problem. Anything goes. I that, wonder why. 
What is that? What is the? Yeah, I was there. gonna say, what's the energy in there where it's people clicky, feel so comfortable? Very clicky. Oh my god, oh, it's, okay. like, it's no man's I land. Keep, that's what I it is. Always it's clicky. Say, like all, all the races stick together. Yeah, it's yeah. so weird because I always say that they mirror school and jail. Like, like they're together. very parallel to each <laughs> with other. The, clicks. the way they're the, yeah. bu- the buildings are built with center blocks and and the the um the tables and the chairs mm-hmm. are the, the bells <laughs> yeah. right they yeah. go to school in the yellow school yeah. bars but yeah. then it's like a blue or you know white. people do but yeah, yeah, I know. it's very like yeah. they nah, like but, set you yeah. up to be workers or to work in jail like yeah, that's, yeah. That's, no but it, it's it's true yeah but if so you were you in control clicky. if you were in control would, would you would you teach kids that way too though i feel like it's it's a good way of teaching kids you know, stay in line, be that's quiet. That's a whole different structure. topic. Well, You're yeah, talking about the structure. Yeah, a little bit of structure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's different. It's not Because people bad. do say schools are kind of like prisons. Yeah, it's They're not prisons all for bad. children. And but that's like, damn, I don't want to think about that. I work in a school. I don't like to think that my students feel like prisoners are getting treated like prisoners. That's a whole different topic. That's a whole that's other a whole topic. Different topic. We can, like, go left That's with good, that though. One. I like that. But that's a good one. I'm going to invite you back for that one. Let's go. I'm ready. That's really good. Um... Okay, wait, where were we? What were we talking about? Colorism. Colorism. Okay. Yeah, so you said it was very clickish. Oh, so, yeah. Man. It's horrible in there. Everybody's who they are. <laughs> like, All right, so did you participate? <coughs> Be honest. Of course not. Oh, no, I think we said, of course I did. <laughs> I, had no I had to survive. He's, li- he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying that's crazy. There, so. so, like, what is your response to that? Like, when you're working there, like, how did you, were you, like, uncomfortable? Oh, is nah. it just like, Yo, what it's is like? in there. Okay. Mm. As soon as I'm, I walk in those front doors, I'm a different person. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, in yeah, there yeah, and, yeah. and it's business mode. Right. Even though I was still a psycho in there, like, laughing and, yeah. I was, yeah. I was known as like you know like I, I was actually going to talk about it. I was called like the seagull because I used to eat everybody's leftovers. What? Man, I, I used to be overweight. Is I used the food to eat even a lot. good? No, everybody's leftovers. Uh, oh, the, the, the worker, the, the workers, employee. Yeah. About somebody, to somebody orders pizza, <laughs> salad, salad. You eat the prison food, right? But I also ate the prison food. You're not no supposed way. to. It's against the rules. But was it good? No, it's trash. Why are you eating this? <laughs> I was just, I was just a degenerate. Oh my I, was, I was living on such a it, negative life. I was just through. eating everything. Oh my Jail God. hot dogs, no oh. problem. I'm having like four of them. Ew. <laughs> Did you eat Mustard. any of their specialties? You know how they be whipping up certain things? Nah, I don't, I don't fuck with what they make. <laughs> Man, they they, they they bake cakes and shoe, nah. And what? And shoes? No, <laughs> shoe, SHU, the special housing unit. 23 oh, hour lockdown. Shoes too. I'm like, wait, what yeah, the fuck I are they doing in prison? Like, they got wait. it bad. They baking shit in shoes. <laughs> like, Yo, they you... made cakes like saran wrap with a bunch of leftovers. I don't even want to talk oh, about nah. it. But oh, my God. racism is very open. And yeah. yo, the thing is, seniority is everything in jail. Mm-hmm. So you're a noob you're a newbie you ain't shit to everybody mm-hmm. even even the inmates mm-hmm. so a, a guy with 30 years he's being very racist to you or to an inmate or to another officer in front of you what are you gonna do right. and there you're nobody mm-hmm. nobody his 30 years is gold in that place my my six months is like yo we could replace you in, 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 yeah. in a week yeah 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 no, I, that makes oh, sense. so racism was nothing you just gotta take it yeah oh my I'm, god I'm getting on my lunch what you got there rice and beans oh my the god COs. what you got there rice and beans right all that shit. So they they were, to go with they it. were being very racist towards you. Oh, yeah, every day there's racism. Like, yeah. All Rice that and shit happens. And they were white. Yeah. These are white people telling you that. Yeah. So that's that's, that's what I also wanted to talk about, right? Like we always get this divide, right? Yeah. And it's like, oh well, you can't identify as black because you're light skinned and even though you're Spanish or whatever, Latino. But it's like at the end of the day, to white people, we're all the same. That's we are all the fu- it don't matter 100%. that you light skin that you dark skin it doesn't it fucking matter. matter so it's like exactly. why do we do that to each other I don't get it I think it's cause you kinda have like that crabs in a barrel mentality mm-hmm. explain in a sense that you just want to make it out and like fuck anybody and whatever leave them behind and just be that one up because you're mm-hmm. able to assimilate to being white mm-hmm. Or the closest thing to being white. Mm-hmm. Proximity to whiteness. Yeah, yeah that's a know? thing. Mm-hmm. And I know that in the in Hispanic or Spanish Latino culture, that I don't really. I'm a New Yorker, so I don't speak Spanish, but I understand it. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. that. I feel like I learned from like my friends growing up mm-hmm. and listening to songs. But I know that there is a saying to like 
strengthen the bloodline. Oh, yeah, to lighten the race. Lighten the race. Yeah, there yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. In the sense that, like, if you were of darker tone, you wanted to make sure you married someone of lighter tone mm-hmm. and that that kind of progressed to the next generation so that mm-hmm. you are whitening or advancing the race. Mm-hmm. And a lot of our people don't even know this. They really don't. And that's like so embedded in like colonization and really trying to wipe out our history. Mm -hmm. They don't teach us any of this. You have to really want to know who you are. And I feel like when we're such a biracial mixed race Mm -hmm. that like our cousins look different. My aunt looks different. I look different. Mm -hmm. We're all related. So it's like it makes us made me want to dig into like who are we yeah you know yeah. and like what are we in the sense because everybody wants to put us in a box everybody wants to tell us who we are mm. oh yes and let's talk about that <laughs> yep. because okay so now i feel you on the new york yeah. thing i don't really i wouldn't say i'm new york but even with that right so i'm both i'm dominican and puerto rican mm-hmm. but even within my family there's jokes like oh that's your puerto rican side coming of out course. that's yeah. your dominican side coming out now i didn't want to be puerto rican with we i did with not she i did, did not. i'm literally <laughs> gonna say that i did not want to identify with my puerto rican side because wow. most of my friends were dominican yes. predominantly yeah and so they would talk shit and then it's like, well, I'm Dominican, so fuck it. I'm Dominican. Da, da, da. But it's like, no, why? That's it was stupid. always like a back and forth between always. us, though. So like always. with the cracks and the jokes of like PR versus DR. And Puerto Ricans can't speak Spanish. Or they how we say attitude. certain foods, you know, mm-hmm. like like Kipe and yeah. like Acapujas. Or even or um, Frio Oca- Frio. Oca- Oca- or like Frio Frio. Or Cajo. Cajo. <laughs> Cajo. Yeah, I don't Cajo. mean, y'all don't be saying Guagua. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, do you guys, okay, so you know what, let me give you a word. If I said, Batelillo, I hate that one. Empanadas, Pastelito. Pastelito. I'm like, what's a Pastelillo? You already know they're Puerto Rican if they say it like that. From New York. But, wait, where are we going with this? Fuck, that was good. The differences, I think you were Yeah, the differences, and I just feel like, even among that, like, we have that towards each other already. And it's like, Mm. we're already all the same. Why would we add more divisiveness to us in that way? But it do be jokes. I mean, I I don't really take it that seriously. The root is because PR is a U.S. territory. So others may see Mm. that as like a one-up because you're automatically like citizens. And a lot of Puerto Ricans do feel that way. Yes. Until they have a reality check that they look at you like second citizens. And they, we witnessed that when Trump threw us Mm -hmm. paper towels (laughs) while, you know, we we got hit with, uh, was it Maria? Yeah, I think so. And it's just like, this is how they see us. They didn't even, he didn't even want to touch us Mm -hmm. or personally give us hand help, you know? Right now, like what the fuck is paper towels going to do? (laughs) <laughs> that's crazy soak up a whole I mean, flood is, it, like. I mean granted he did give the quicker picker upper I'm gonna say it's bouncy <laughs> you know it was branded so I'll give him that thank you <laughs> a man no, of class thank you uh, I'm not born. a man of Uh-oh. class how do y'all feel he about that gave, uh, he could've gave the store brand I mean think about it Imagine, you imagine the, the president right of the brand. United States giving shop right brand to PR. For That's for fucking crazy. He really don't give a fuck. <laughs> Not even a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sorry. So, do you guys feel like you guys are really in touch with your Latino roots? Growing up, being raised in America, how in tune do you really feel to that side of you? So, this is the big difference ah. between Dominicans and Puerto Ricans. Yes. Uh, yeah. Ooh. So, Since Puerto Rico is. Part of America, mm-hmm. Puerto Ricans are more Americanized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dominicans are still more old school. So we have that, like we were talking earlier, you have a tattoo, you're that guy in the family. If oh, you smoke tattoos. weed or oh, anything, oh, yeah. oh, oh it's my God. You're a tecato. Drug yeah, you're a tecato. You're a drug addict. Mm-hmm. You're going to OD one day because they you know have... that it's not you. <laughs> you're going to OD on yeah. weed is all that. You, you want to know what's funny? I, really I, I do that too. That. I know. Like, yeah. you know, like just certain individuals around me that be like, oh, you smoking? You might as well smoke meth. Like, yeah. Because you know. yeah. that's how I It's all I the smoke. same thing. It's all the same it's thing. The same. It's the devil's work. Dominicans yeah. also OD on everything. Everything's yeah. the 
biggest exaggeration. So yeah, yeah weed is is meth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and, yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah, that 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 is the difference. Mm-hmm. I feel. I feel like that's one of the biggest differences. I agree. Mm-hmm. You got well, not you guys. You guys, <laughs> half of you guys, half you guys, and you <laughs> guys like ahead of us. So you guys are way more Americanized. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like there is a difference between like American Puerto Ricans and those that grew up. On the island. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, a huge percent. difference. And look at Bad Bunny. They don't <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. But they don't really I feel like those that were like born and raised on the island, they don't really cut a slack. You know, ones that are born and raised in America. Why would they? The, yeah, but yeah, we're different, here. but it's yeah, just, we go through a struggle. <laughs> I mean, we went through a different struggle. Yeah. Right? We, they, the concrete jungle. It's it's a whole it's different, a struggle. Whole different game. Animal. It's a struggle. And then but on top care. of that, it's like the last thing you really want when you go back to like, let's say home, if you go to Puerto Rico. Yeah. The last thing you really want when you go back is for them to say, well, you don't really belong with us. Damn. You know what I mean? Like right. you're not, right. you're not Puerto Rican enough for us. That's so it's like nice. now we're not even going to welcome you in that way. That's right. not nice. Because and then that gets me to another point in a sense that, okay, Mm-mm. white people don't accept us. But then if we say we black, like our black brothers say, and sisters, that especially in the, in, in the Bronx or in New York, you know, they also accept us to a certain extent. Mm hmm. And it's like, okay, where do we fit in? Mm -hmm. I was going to say if because, okay, I had a thought. I was very high. (laughs) You know, when you high, you just be thinking random shit. So I started thinking I was watching a podcast and they were like, what were your favorite sitcoms growing up? Your favorite black sitcoms? And I was able to list them. I used to watch Moesha, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, all those shows. Right. But then I'm like, I don't have any Spanish sitcoms that I really feel like I grew up. And that was like something I could relate to. Other than Diana. Diana, but even that was like two two seasons. And I was going to say, a lot of the shows, they start for a season or two, they get canceled. Yeah, there's no real representation of us until like George Lopez, in a sense. Yeah, but then it's like Mexican. I don't see that. I don't feel it. But it was good. But there, I mean, there was a there's similarities. There's similarities. There's similarities. No, because my point is this, right? Because you look at, I don't know any other. Okay, look. So Zoe Saldana, Saldana, yeah, the yeah, one yeah. who does. You guys know who she is. Yeah, She's a Colombiana. Yeah. Yeah. She's Dominican. Yeah. She, you know her. If you see her face. Okay. Um, she's not white. Well, she married an Italian. My yeah. point is, oh, she's so Dominican. She's okay, keep going. She's Dominican. But then the first Spanish role that she got to play was to be a Colombian in a movie. Mm. And it's like, well, why? That whole movie could have been DR. It could have been Dominicana. It didn't have to be Colombiana. Oh, no, but it's on. true. And then you got Paul, you got J Lo. They make her be Italian in a lot of those movies when she first right, started. So, and it's like, why? Just let her be Puerto Rican. Who wait, cares? But isn't that maybe the, when I think one, somebody said the clip that you have posted saying like the difference between Rosie Perez and, and Jennifer J-Lo. Lopez. Yeah, and J-Lo. I didn't really know the difference. Maybe that's oh, what amazing, it was. Yeah. Maybe There's because, a difference between Rosie Perez and J-Lo? Yeah, but maybe that's what it was. It's because J-Lo is able to represent herself as white. Maybe. And Rosie, in a sense, she can. can't. Because she's no. more commercialized. But could it be? But it also too. no, no, like, no, no, no. But in a sense, Jayla. it could be features as well. It could be like you know, you can't say that J Lo doesn't have more European features than she Rosie does. Perez. She does. You know, so it's kind of like maybe that's why they prefer Rosie in certain parts of our community or black community than J Lo. <laughs> You're right. Okay, so I yes, I agree with that. And I also feel like a lot of the shows that are um, that have been out, they've gotten canceled. Mm. But I feel like they force these like historical Latin lessons where it's like just be a show like Sex and the City. Those girls were mostly white. I mean, they were white and they were just having sex. Like, why can't you just put Dominicans and Puerto Ricans on TV and just let them live a regular life on TV? Why does it have to be, oh, we celebrate this holiday and it's so special and this is the history. And it's like, can we just have regular, just, let's just start with having the representation out there. Didn't right. they have Maybe a trying sh- to do too much. Didn't they have a show like um, in the Heights about like Dominicans or something? And oh, it got heights. canceled. Yeah. 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 I feel like it anything. It got canceled because it was trash. Yeah. Yeah. It was trash. Yeah, it, was, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was It was pretty I bad. I never met any Dominicans like anybody on that show. Yeah, it was like oh that. You remember that show? No. We used to watch it in, oh, in high school. It came out, but it was so short that you missed it, it if you didn't watch it. You blinked up an eye and it's gone. But like, what do y'all think about that? Let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah, I get that, but I think 
when it came to TV, mm-hmm. it's always about money. Mm. So if there's not enough viewership for Spanish, mm-hmm. there's not a big Spanish audience. Yeah. But how if we're like second? I'm saying, but these is people. Is it that we don't support each other? I think wise. it's that these people that are in control of television do the research and Spanish was just, was just not it. That must be it. Because if it's going to get, if it's going to bring money, right. of course, every channel's they down. Do everybody's it. down. Of course. And the numbers must have just not added up. Yeah. My well, opinion, that's a, I don't know. Just, I might be talking shit, but it just sounds okay. right. Because money's at the, everything at the end of the day. No, I agree. And I and I do feel like it's like we really don't support each other, honestly. Mm. I feel like I would be more inclined because of me being born and raised here, right? I would be more inclined to like go to the more black side of television. Mm. Or the white side, because that's what's really out. But like, I feel like even with the music, I'd rather listen to hip hop and R and B. I don't want to listen to Spanish music. Right. I don't Same. feel that connection to it. No. Once in a blue, like yeah, I'll listen to Bad Bunny here and there if I'm outside and they're playing it cool. I'm gonna dance to it. But we, I feel like growing up here and being so watered that's, down, that's. we would just prefer that. Is that would y'all agree or I'm, no? I'm, that's definitely me all day. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because yeah. yeah, because being from here, absolutely. Yeah. But there are people that are from here and they're still in tune with that, like very much in tune. And I even want to do another episode with those people so they can talk about their experience. Because like, how do you maintain that when you have your friends who are probably mostly black or if they are Spanish, they're not really speaking Spanish like that. Y'all all listening to hip hop. Y'all all watching certain shows that right. have no Spanish people on. Right. You're going to lose it. How do you keep that? I definitely agree because like my parents didn't speak to my like my sister and my brother and I in Spanish. For them, it was more of a code. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, so y'all would understand? Yeah, amongst each other. <clears throat> and until you start picking shit up, you know, because I'm from the Bronx, yeah, we listen to hip hop, but Latin music is everywhere. Mm-hmm. And you kind of just pick up on certain things, especially if your friends are Dominican. Mm-hmm. Like, our friends were predominantly Dominican, so they're speaking Spanish amongst each other. So mm-hmm. you kind of have to, like, yeah, you know, pick, you know it up. pick it up, pick it up. So, but I definitely feel like my family really tried to Americanize and assimilate in mm-hmm. a sense, you know? Because, mm-hmm. well, I would say from my mom's side predominantly, because my grandmother from my dad spoke English, but she always mm-hmm. preferred Spanish. She was, that's just what it was. But my mom's mom, my grandmother on that side, she, became like a bilingual teacher. She wanted oh, to teach English. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then like kind of live more of that world, that sense. So it kind of is like, who am I? Mm-hmm. I'm not American because they don't see me as white right. American. Right. Or, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm from America. But, but I'm Puerto Rican. Mm-hmm. So it kind of is like, you get kind of like in a limbo. Yeah, I agree. That's how I feel. My parents don't. You could put no. You could put more. Yeah, um, <laughs> my my parents always spoke to us in Spanish, but they also speak English. So it was like I didn't really feel oh. forced to respond in Spanish because you know what I'm saying, regardless. Mm. And I feel like also my parents, which is more my father, he wasn't really like a big education school guy. Like he didn't finish school. My mom, she was just focused on raising us. Like even my parents, it was like they just had to work pay the bills, feed us. Was nobody like really caring about me having those values? We just live. exactly Aww. it. I was just about to say, it's just about caring. Yeah. Caring. Whatever you put your focus on is what you care about is what you're going to think about and obsess and talk about. Mm-hmm. People, some people just don't care. Like don't me, care. I don't care. When mm-hmm. it comes to race and drama, leave me out of it. Mm-hmm. I treat everybody the same. If you don't treat me equally, I don't want you in my mm-hmm. life. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. Anything deeper than that, I don't care. I don't care how you view me. I don't care what box you put me in. Mm-hmm. What you yeah. say, think, and feel has nothing to do with me. That's how I feel. Yeah. Fuck yeah. all that bullshit. Fuck yeah. being emotional to everybody else's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Well, I was. <laughs> so I feel like <clears throat> getting to know you. That is such a you response. <laughs> like I feel that. <laughs> I feel that. How about you? French as fashion. I mean, growing up, like I, my mom only spoke Spanish. Okay. So I had the different. So I was forced to like. I mean, when I was born there. Mm-hmm. And then my mom and my grandma only speak Spanish. Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm still very fluent in Spanish. And, you know, people that meet me and be like, you came here at what age? And right. you talk Spanish like that? Mm-hmm. The hell? Mm-hmm. You know, that's like, what the hell? You know, and then when I go to DR and I speak Spanish like that, they're like, 
you from here? I'm like, nah, I mean. You just sound like, I was like, born yeah. here, but like, yeah. no. You know, mm-hmm. I was, I got there. I, I left when I was three years old. So mm-hmm. it surprises people. But it, it just, <clears throat> what you was raised with. You know, yeah. if you was raised with your parents talking Spanish, you're forced to talk Spanish. Mm-hmm. Francho, do you speak Spanish? I do, but not 100% fluent. Okay, but yeah, what's crazy same. is when I go to DR, people tell me like, yo, you sound like you're from here. But it's weird. I guess it's just the accent that I have when right. I speak Spanish. Right. It must just be a Dominican yeah. accent, right. I guess. Do y'all care about that stuff? Like, how but, important is it to teach your children Spanish? Because you have, you just have your, your son. How old is he now? He's like 17 months. So he's young. But like, is that something that you want to implement? And is that something that you try to teach your, like your daughter nah, or your kid? It's it's not simple. So I, I didn't even start. I didn't okay. even try. That's something she would have to do if she wants to and then dedicate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't I really like, force yeah. it, you know, teaching anybody mm-hmm. anything. Well, like the accent part you mean? Or no, just, like just no, teaching them Spanish. Spanish. Like there's a lot of parents that are like, when I have kids, I'm just going to speak to them in Spanish. So that way well, they I know. Why do you feel like so it should be forced in a sense? Because, you know, they teach their children. A lot of people teach their children to be bilingual at a young age yeah. for me i want my son to learn so i tell my mother since you didn't do it with us right you're gonna do it with him mm-hmm. you know and then he has these shows that i that i I was able to find in both english and spanish mm-hmm. so i play them both so he can understand and you know i'm learning too the oh, world. Girl. <laughs> yes. you know never too late never too late no it's of not course, it's course. never too late <laughs> absolutely so i was you why wouldn't you for, force that or want to teach that to your your child? Your child, your, yeah, your daughter, yeah, right? Yeah, one daughter, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't want to teach is what I meant. Like teaching her like word for word. Okay. okay. And it seems like like work to her still. Okay. It's oh. and that's what I mean. It, if she would want to, I think it'd be much easier and better. But if she doesn't want to, it's... Yeah, that's how I was. Because my parents used to be like, no, you're going to... We're not going to listen to you or respond to you unless you speak to us in Spanish. And I'm like, all right, so I'm just not speaking to you. Exactly. And then after a few hours, they forget about it. Of but course. it's like, I didn't want to do that. Yeah. It was not something that I found joy in. Like, I just want to talk though? to you in English. I don't know. It was just like... Why are you doing this? It was for it was for interesting. Okay. And I was a kid, and it's like this is too much work. And when you're little, you don't even know all the vocabulary. You're still learning. So like mm-hmm. now, I'm gonna talk to you in a language that I hardly even know all the words. And then to you use. go to school in English, and we're learning English. We're learning and English. Then, like I'm not to... using this. Right. <laughs> it doesn't. But you took Spanish in high school, though. I took right? Spanish in high school. Okay. Yeah. How was that for you? It was fine because I understand everything. You exactly. could talk to me in Spanish all day. All I would right. understand everything you have okay. to say to me. I just don't want to respond to you in Spanish. <laughs> like. Uh, uh, I feel so weird about it. Parents don't know how to teach. They so, don't. <laughs> so they just yeah. say, I'll talk to you in Spanish. Right. Don't talk to me in English. That's not how you teach. That's not Imagine how you teach. Imagine going to school and they say, I'll talk to you about social studies. I'm going to just talk to you about social studies and you got to listen. Yeah. Damn, man. No, that's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. <laughs> so how do they just teach you English? How do you just learn English? Okay, that's a whole speech therapy thing. I, I, I learned them <laughs> in true, home true, because true, of my but, siblings. Yeah. No, you learn. I mean, you learn the language that you hear the most and that you're around the most. Basically, that's it. So, like, even if you're learning academic Spanish, then when you try to have conversational Spanish with your friends from DR who they speak that, like, oh my God. Like, it's different. I feel like Puerto Ricans, yeah, they drag their words. Yeah, so it's so different. Damn, I'm learning academic Spanish. I'm not even learning this shit. He's using, like, Bana and all these other words. I didn't hear them say that shit in school. Like, you know what I mean? It's like. real Spanish, by the way. It's just like it's broken. It's just like some because it's they teach you Spaniard, Spain, Spanish. They teach you the colonizers' language. Spanish isn't even our. It's the colonizers' language. I mean, like it's okay. I don't speak Spanish because that's another colonized language that I'm gonna be learning. It is. It absolutely is. (laughs) So yeah. Oh my god. All right. Hold on. Where were we? Okay. We're gonna talk now about using the N word. Let's do it. As Spanish people, and that's gonna be the last topic. Thoughts? I never <laughs> used it. You've never used that word? Never in my life okay. used okay. it. Just because I know the negativity it came from, and it's just... How did you learn about that word to begin with? Was right. it something like it you just... It must have been music. Music, okay. Yeah. I okay. have an older brother. He uses it. Okay. Five years older than me. Yeah. And then music. And then That's, TV, movies, yeah. whatever. Right, right, That's right. That's always how it's been like introduced, though. Especially since if you grew up listening to hip-hop. Mm-hmm. Right? Or... Being born and raised in the Bronx or like Yonkers. Oh, yeah, yeah, and you see too. everybody using it. Yeah. yeah so you don't think there's anything wrong with using it. No, especially because if you know that the history of hip hop, like Puerto Ricans also help create the movement. Mm-hmm. So it's like when you hear it in the music, you feel like 
this is us. Like, right. You're my friend. This is, or you're my homie or, mm-hmm. you know, and people only also, I think I was telling you before that they don't really know the, the roots, roots of the word because the N word really came from a Nigerian word or negus. Yeah. For King. For king mm-hmm. or royalty. So it was really used or changed to mock, you know, who you were that you're no longer. Mm-hmm. And know? I was going to say that. And then it was changed again, mm-hmm. you know, to, to take it back. And I always just feel like it's the content you're using in. Why you feel like you are OK to use it. Right. And because we're biracial, a lot of us are biracial. So I don't think anybody could tell you how to use it in a sense, but you also should be very cautious in how you're using it, why you're using it mm-hmm. in a, in a way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you guys, how do you feel? I, I don't care. You won't use it. It's you just, how do you it. use it? <laughs> very much so. <laughs> I'm guilty. You were Sorry. bad boy. Yeah. Yeah. But, but did you think you were saying anything wrong? When you first started saying it, of course I was probably know. like eight or nine. You know how I feel about it? It's like, I feel like I am black. Right. In a way, you know what I'm saying? Like, even though, okay, I am Dominican, whatever. Yeah, yeah but you see, but, and even with that, Dominican, I want to make it very clear, Dominican is an ethnicity, it's not yes. a race. Yes. Okay, boom. But go ahead. So, like, I relate to my black colleagues and friends and whatever. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm like, like right. them. You just speak you know Spanish. What I'm and I listen to a lot of right. hip hop. Yeah. You know, I, I, being from Yonkers. You know, Yonkers love. Yonkers mm. love. Now you know? y'all repping Yonkers, like, by... What? VX. Okay, so Why are you repping Bronx? This is definitely one of the best cities in the world. Yeah, what no, are you talking not. about? Oh, he's from Yonkers, too, so he'll agree. We're cousins. We're neighbors. We're neighbors. Even though people think Yonkers I, is upstate I love, for I whatever love, fucking reason. I love, I love <laughs> the Bronx for what it is, but Yonkers is, is beautiful for what it is also. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, no, there's actually a lot of differences. It's actually incomparable. Really? 100%. <laughs> <laughs> the Bronx is very slummy. A lot of slummy. A lot it's of true. slummy. Yonkers has a lot less slummy. But it's slummy. Yonkers, of course. Yeah, but it's less slummy. Smaller. Every city has a hood. It's right. Every hood no, has a for ghetto. real. For real. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's just the Bronx is bigger. <laughs> yeah, it's more more opportunities for slum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. lot more land yeah. for the slumming. Yeah. I don't know. People, when people were responding, they were just saying, like, and it was some I had some black women responding to okay. and a lot of them they didn't mind but it's like what you had said like if you're gonna go your whole life as a Latino and never claim your African roots yeah. then why do you feel so okay to use that word right. because then when it's time for you to actually be that word be black you don't want to have any parts of that yeah. you ain't with it you ain't with it you, you know it's, it's literally just vocabulary at the end of the day it's like saying yo to people Mm-hmm. It's it's really that it's like we don't saying, mean it in a way yeah, that is derogatory. Exactly. 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 Oh, white exactly. people use it. If you're from the hood, it's just vocabulary from the hood. That's how I always I don't see know it. How I feel about white people using it. Though. I grew up around uh, everybody uh, saying it. Every race said white it. people were saying it too. Of course. Uh. Nobody, white people said that. I never had a white person say that to me. I've never had a white person say that. In their vocabulary, like just talking, like yeah. I never had a white person say that. In in school, you never. Had a classmate that was white that used the N word. No. Come on, bro. I mean, maybe yeah. one. We also didn't have that many white, white classmates. Really? <laughs> yeah, I no. Know. I like, got count. Count. Y'all must have more white people, I would say, in school. It's like, we had hood white Hood white people, so yeah. So you've, you've experienced it, right? See, it's uh, really so. Because Anthony's it's half black. because it's where they're from. Love. Right. <laughs> All right, so Anthony's black. So Anthony, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> how do you? How did you feel about hearing, seeing white people say it? Like, you're as a, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's always weird, but it's so weird going to Yonkers because, like, a lot of the white people in the hood, like, in the hood. Right. That's how they was raised in the hood. Hey, so it's normal. Yeah. You can, like, you, there's no offense. Like, there's no normal. offense in it at all. Yeah. It was, it was, I don't know how to explain it, but, like, there's white people. Like, like you know they weren't like, being racist when they were using it. It's no, really just that, yeah. right? Oh, it's everyone. just like the culture of yeah. it. Like, for it's example, crazy. I had a friend. I think his name was Anthony, too, by the way. <laughs> Blink that white boy. Mm-hmm. Nice blonde head, crazy chain, fresh to the T. But yeah, he used to, he was very much the, the N word. All right, oh my but God. would he say so it just to pass. his friends or would he 
say it around other people who didn't know either. I don't right. know. But it's that. part of your See? vocabulary. It's all day, every day. Yeah, so you're just going to say it. Those people use it all day, yeah. every day. Yeah. Because it's who you are. Yeah. Right. When you use it on purpose, that's that's a little weird. Right. But if you're raised in it, for example, we all know Paul Wall. He uses the word freely, openly. Mm-hmm. In his songs, he's, he, he, speak, he speaks using the word. Mm-hmm. And it's accepted with a whole rap game. Which have you seen? Everybody knows he's really from those streets. Have he's, you seen Paul Wall lately? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he looks good. Really? He looks very sophisticated he's still, he's still now. Mad random, okay. I know, but like he has a nice like hair to the side, beard is all clear. I was like, okay, Paul Wall, he looking good. Yeah, he's still uh, there was something on TikTok. I was like, who said white people go at girls? And it was like Paul Wall. Paul so Wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Riff Raff. Oh, wow. Remember Riff Raff? Too? No. Yes, I'm a fan of Riff Raff. Riff Raff? Yes. Riff Raff. Wow. I feel like it sounds so familiar. I don't I'm know what that is. If you look it up, you know, okay. you know, right? right? It really, like, it brings like an artist? Up. Yeah, he's yeah. an artist. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> is he? Man, he's from everywhere, but I Texas think, I think Texas is racist, too. That's a racist ass state. Really that state is, is racist as fuck. Yeah. yeah. It's That's a weird place. My friend lives in Texas now, Dallas, and she tells me all the time. It was really weird. Weird? People are very weird. How? Yeah. And one of the weirdest things was I was uh, getting some barbecue at some famous barbecue restaurant. There was somebody in there that looked like they literally just walked out of the hospital. They had bloody bandages. Like, it's just weird stuff like that is going on everywhere. Something's going on everywhere. It's really? weird. Everybody looks like they're going through shit. Honestly, I feel like it's anytime weird. I leave New York, it's weird. Yeah, yeah, right? definitely. Like, definitely. we're the coolest thing New for real. City is weird. Honest, what are you talk- if you the city's not shit, weird. What? I love the city. It's listen, so free and expressive. Listen, 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 listen. weird shit goes on in the city. No, I live in like, Connecticut now, and I've been living in CT for like five, four or five years. And at first, I was paranoid. It was so quiet out there mm-hmm. that I thought like somebody was just going to pop out the bush because you're so used to the noise and all that stuff. But when you go to Maryland or any other place, every it just looks the same. Even Jersey. It's very country. It looks just looks the same. And there yeah. really is <laughs> nothing like New York. It's, yeah. it's, it's but it's so also different. it's all prison in a sense, you know, yeah. people really don't leave New York ever. It's weird. Some. Some, um, left, yeah. right? Some, yeah. You left, right? well, I left, yeah. It's cheaper. It's cheaper. I'm sure. It happened. Connecticut. And Connecticut's nice. I have some friends who moved out there. They like it. They love it. The no. South Bronx is... I'm, I'm the South Bronx is a whole too. different... <laughs> What you the I'm South gonna be right Bronx. with her. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. different. I just, I just bought a house today. Oh, sick, CT, sick. yeah. Congratulations. Congrats. Today, Ooh. he just bought a house. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Very nice. See, baby. Dominican's making it. All right, <laughs> they're making it. A little bit, a little bit. They're making bit. it. Do you guys have any, like, takeaways from this conversation? So, with the are we done with the N-word topic? That was a touchy topic. I didn't even want to really talk about it, but I feel like I'm we need done. to. Because yeah. I mean, a lot of people... It needs right? to be spoken about. It should be spoken about, honestly. Okay, right, but I do want to say that I am trying to not use it as much as I used to. Because I, I used to be, like, every other word for me. Oh. And I now agree. I'm just like, I don't even want to kind of, like, speak... I don't know, use those words Do you anymore. feel like because, in general... Just curse or just... Well, no, cursing I always do because I can't fucking help it. See? I just fucking did it right <laughs> now. Like, I it's just a be form cursing. of expression. Yeah, it's but like way. the N-word because I do... I do still want to acknowledge like the pain that black people feel when, with that word and a lot of black people don't even like that word as much as right. we think, oh, they use it all the time. A lot of them really don't. I feel like if somebody tells you, listen, I don't really like that word around me, you should just respect I it. I think, right. I you feel know? like you should just respect it, honestly. That's how I feel. Like, I have a, a close friend that he never, ever, ever liked to be called that, no matter what, who you are, like, and even, like, he just didn't like it and you had to respect it, you know? And... Especially because it's so touchy. It's, yeah. Right? And there's a lot of pain associated with that word. Yeah. As much as it came from, like, really good origins, positive mm-hmm. origins. There is a lot of pain They've with changed it. that word yeah. to mean a lot of bad things. So I just, you know, just want to be respectful. In, in New York State Prison, that word is used to uh, ex- explain a black person sometimes. Yeah. Like, no, like, no, not, like nothing. Nothing nothing. Yeah, like, just like it's that, regular. Right. Instead of saying those two black guys, those two... Right, just say black guys. Yeah, like, what? I don't get Cause, it. Cause, you know why? Because we all know what they mean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and it shows some type of... This is this is the type of sick fuck I am because these are the words I'm using. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it's just the whole presence in there. You already know who this person yep. is by the way they speak. Mm-hmm. Inmates fear that also. Because if he's speaking to me like this, imagine what he'll do to me. 
That's also why they do it. Oh my god, that's fascinating. I'm Every, definitely gonna have you a, on again. Everything's a mind game well, in there. Right? It's insane. Yeah, right, I want to talk about colorism. that. So, colorism? Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. Because, in the sense that you just said, I'm trying to like really word it up properly. Talk about it. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take, take your time. time. Take your time. <laughs> take your time. Well, what do you take away from this episode? Think about it. I want to yeah, hear what you guys right, right, right. What do you take away from this episode? Anything good? Anything bad? <laughs> <laughs> about the, the whole episode. Overall? Everything, yeah. Like, how do you feel? I don't know. Anything. I, I mean, honestly, like the whole Spanish thing, like, I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. You know, because you just because you're Spanish doesn't mean you feel like you're, you know, like, for example, like what I said, mm-hmm. I'm Hispanic, yeah? But I relate more to, like, my black brothers and sisters, right. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean I'm not <laughs> Dominican. Right, it doesn't mean that. I, I'm still very much Dominican. I love Spanish food. I love my Dominican people and everything but like that. But I can't go to, like, a Dominican parking lot and be with your chedos and be there like five hours. Yeah, I no. can't. I can't to do, do be at a car meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a like, car meet is fine with me. I can't. Well, like, I can't be there for eight hours either. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I got, I got limited drinking. time that I could just be there for that. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it's just too much for me. I, and I think that's because people still don't understand the difference between nationality, ethnicity, and race. Break it down for us. So your ethnicity is like your your culture, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Your nationality is where you're born, mm-hmm. right? You're born in America. You're American. You're born in DR. You're Dominican, and then you have your race, which is your honestly your like your complexion, right? So, yeah, the features that are the associated to that. Yeah, to you know England, white American, you know way of living or lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So once you understand, like, yeah, I'm Dominican. I'm always going to be Dominican. But I I feel like I get along with black. It's because you are black, right? Yeah. It's a race. So it's just like there really is no separation in a sense. But I really feel like just America likes to divide us so much. Mm-hmm. Like to divide is to conquer. Mm-hmm. And then you have to choose a side. Mm-hmm. And then that's why there's really no balance between our communities. Because we're constantly going back and forth for who we are. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And and this this is my take too. Like at the end of the day, like I feel like certain individuals, I don't want to point fingers. Yeah. They see us all the same. Right. So it's like, what the hell? Does it mm-hmm. matter? You know what I'm saying? So it's like if I get pulled over tomorrow, you may oh this you know, like he's already putting me in a box with right. somebody else. You yeah, because to him you look black. That's what I'm saying. Right. So like that's why like I don't whatever. I am what I am. Yeah, you can either embrace it or just lie to yourself. Mm-hmm. And I chose to embrace it. And that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the most important thing is just like we have these conversations just to really give our experience. Our opinions. Um, everybody's gonna feel however the fuck they want to feel. Like Fran just said, it's like fuck it. Like Yo. how you feel is how you feel. Fuck how you feel. Fuck I yeah. mean, right. I don't give a fuck about right. your feelings. Right. But I think the most important thing is just to just bring awareness to things and just you know now that you have the information because also too my takeaway is like you don't know what you don't know, right? So we also can't fault a lot of people for having the beliefs they have if they don't know any better. I'm gonna judge you more or probably be a little bit more resistant to have a conversation with you if now you have the information and you don't do anything with it you're not trying to do your own research you're not trying to be educated on it like we could disagree but like you don't even know what you're really disagreeing to because you don't have all the information so i would just like implore everybody out there like if these are the first if this is the first time you're hearing any of these things go out and actually do your research and like learn a little bit more and get more in tune with like who you are where you come from and just be able to have these conversations openly so that's it thank you guys for joining and um, yeah, plug whatever. Shout out to Natalie. Woo! Shout out to me. Yes, yes, yes. I'm Patch, Frenjas, and Poppy Shampoo. Keep, keep, keep doing your thing, girl. Thank, you thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Catch them thing. on the shorter end of the stick podcast every Friday, right? At 7 every p.m. Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I remembered. Okay. And um, Melissa, all streaming platforms. Yes. you have anything you want to say? She's having a baby. Congrats to thank her. Congratulations. Her second baby. And I'm done. That's it. <laughs> Two and done. Second and done? done. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. All right, guys. So thank you. We're out of here. Bye. Bye. Peace and love, everybody. That was good, guys. It was. It was very good. Thank you for having us.